Sketching transformations of square roots and cube roots. This stuff is fun. Let's look at the first one. Parent function, y equals the square root of x. You know what we do when we don't know a function? We make a table to see what it looks like. So y equals the square root of x. Let me make my table. All right, if I choose like to plug in negative one, the square root of negative one is imaginary and I'm not graphing that. So let's start at zero. Let's plug in zero, let's plug in one. If I pick two, I'm gonna get a square root of two. So maybe I'm not gonna pick that. Let's pick a perfect square, four, cause I can take the square root of four. Okay, so now I'm gonna plug in these values to y equals the square root of x. So y equals the square root of zero, that's zero. Y equals the square root of one, one. And then y equals the square root of four, that's two. Let's plot these and see what this guy looks like. What would the next perfect square be? Nine perhaps? So it'd be the square root of nine, which is three. Okay, well if I plot that over here, then I'm kind of gonna graph this little sketch. Hmm, what does that look like? Maybe a Nike swish or an upside down Nike swish a little bit. Yeah, so that's what all square root graphs are gonna look like. Well, cool. So what's the domain of this graph? Well, if I'm on the x-axis walking across, I start to see it at zero and then everywhere after that. So zero inclusive to infinity or x is greater than or equal to zero. And then for my range, start on the y-axis, I don't see it until zero, and then everywhere after zero, I can see the graph. So zero inclusive to infinity, y is greater than or equal to zero. Let's examine the parent function. Well, we start at this value zero, zero. Let's call that the endpoint. Now from that endpoint, let's look, we go to the right one and up one, okay. And then we went back to the endpoint, right four and up two. Well, what if I wanted another point? Back to the endpoint right nine and up three. Well, sweet, this is kind of like quadratics then. We have pattern points we can follow. We start at the end point, we go right one, up one. Start at the end point, right four, up two. Now let's look at transformations of this parent function. Pick another color to graph these. H of x equals negative square root x. Well, we know that those negative signs reflect us about the x axis, but let's prove it. Let's plot them in our table. Well, and look at that, it did reflect over the x axis. It affects my y values. Now they're negative. So how does this affect my pattern points? If I start at that zero, zero endpoint, when I go to the right one, instead of going up one, I'm going to go down one. Back to that endpoint, go to the right four and down two. Choose another color for this last graph. K of x equals the square root of negative x. Ooh, a negative is under the square root. We're not sure what that does transformation wise yet. So let's make a table. I chose values zero, negative one, and negative four for x. There's a reason why, you'll see. If I plug in zero, square root of negative zero is just the square root of zero, so I'm gonna get zero. Square root of negative, negative one. Double negatives make a positive, aha! You can see why I chose that negative one, right? Then I'm just gonna get the square root of positive one. I can do that and get one. Square root of negative, negative four. I'm gonna get square root of positive four and get two. So I chose those negative x values on purpose. Let's graph it. What were the transformations on my parent function? Look, it reflected over the y axis, the vertical axis. How did it affect my values in my table? The x values were affected. They became the negatives. So now we know if the negatives outside the entire function, it reflects about the x-axis, horizontal axis, and if the negatives inside with the x, it reflects over the y-axis or the vertical axis. Let's state the transformations and use those to graph these next functions. f of x equals the square root of x minus two minus one. Okay. Good news is we are already so good at transformations. Remember the inside transformations are the horizontal transformations. The outside are the vertical transformations. So underneath my square root inside my function, I have this minus two. Well, I know that that's just gonna be a horizontal translation to the right two. Then outside I have that minus one. Well, that's gonna be a vertical translation outside same, so down, one. Now let's use these translations to draw the new graph. Let's first get the parent function on the graph. Okay, so that parent function, we've got that endpoint, and then from there we went right one, up one, back to the endpoint, right four, up two, no big deal. Let's transform this now. We're supposed to shift to the right two and translate down one. So we really only need to shift that endpoint because then from there we're just going to use our pattern points to draw the rest. 
So taking that endpoint at zero, zero and moving it to the right two and down one, I'm now at two, negative one. From there, I can use my pattern points, right one, up one, back to the endpoint, right four, up two. There's my transformed graph. How did that affect my domain and range? Domain, walking across my X axis, only looking for that transformed graph. When will I see it first? Well, below me, I'll start to see it right here at two, and then everywhere after that, I'm gonna see the graph. So two inclusive to infinity. What about the range? On my Y axis now, climbing up, I'm gonna see it for the first time right there at negative one, and then everywhere after that. So negative one inclusive to infinity. What do you notice about my domain and range? And that endpoint, the endpoint was two negative one and the domain was two inclusive to infinity and the range was negative one inclusive to infinity. Wonder if that always works. Let's try it on this next one. Look at G of X, see if you can state the transformations. Y equals the square root of X has been vertically compressed by a factor of one half and translated to the left one unit. Let's graph this. The endpoint originally for the parent function is at zero, zero. Well, the only translation I have is to the left one. So I'm gonna go ahead and get that endpoint down right now. Okay, well now I'm ready to use my pattern points. I go from the endpoint right one, up one, from the endpoint right four, up two. But wait, we have a vertical compression by a factor of one half. Well, that just means I'm gonna multiply my y values by that factor of one half. So from the endpoint, right one, instead of up one, one times a half, I'm gonna go up a half. So right one, up a half. Okay, back to the endpoint, I go right four, up two, but now I'm multiplying two by that factor of one half. So one, from the endpoint, right four, up one. Because our points got compressed like that, I'm gonna make sure I label each point so I'm being extra specific. Make sure you do that too. Now time for domain and range. Let's see if we can use our prior observation to find them quickly. Okay, so before we noticed that the endpoint had to do with the X and Y value in the domain and range. All right, well, my endpoint's negative one, zero. So is it true that I could write the domain is negative one inclusive to infinity and the range is zero inclusive to infinity? Let's check. If I'm walking across the x-axis, negative one is the first place I would see the graph, and then everywhere after that, oh, it worked. Let's see if it works for range. Zero to infinity, it totally works. So this holds true. But we gotta be really careful with this, because when we start reflecting things, we start affecting our domain and range. So I'm gonna go gander back up at the top. There we had k of x equals the square root of negative x. So that reflected our graph, about the y axis. How does that affect my domain and range? Okay, well, if I'm on the x axis, there's me right there. If I start walking across, I can see the graph right away. I'm seeing it right here. And then I walk all the way to that endpoint. I'm seeing the graph all the way up until there. Then everywhere after that, I'm not seeing the graph anymore. So the domain would be negative infinity to zero inclusive the range would still be zero to infinity. Well, let's see our other reflected graph. That was h of x. h of x equals negative square root x. We reflected about the x-axis. So if I look for my domain on that one, I start to see the graph at zero and then all the way to infinity. So zero inclusive to infinity, no big deal. But then my range, when I'm on the y-axis at negative infinity, I can actually see the graph. So negative infinity to zero. All this is to say we really need to be careful when we're trying to find our domain and range, especially on reflections. If we're trying to shortcut using the endpoint, we might make a mistake. Y equals the cube root of X. Let's get our table of values. We want to think of things that we can easily take the cube root of. Well, zero, of course, but I'm going to put zero right in the middle. The cube root of zero is zero. Why did I do that? Because whenever we're trying to figure out a graph, we want to remember to think about some of the negative X values and the positive X values to make sure we get an accurate graph. Well, then what's the next thing that I can take the cube root of? Well, one, cube root of one is one. Hmm, what's after that? Gosh, I have to go all the way out to eight because two cubed is eight. So the cube root of eight would be two. Well, in that case, let's consider the negative values of those, the opposite. So negative one, the cube root of negative one, negative one, cube root of negative eight is going to be negative two. Let's go ahead and sketch our graph, plot those points. Try and have a smooth curve. 
Notice that I really made it kind of flat there because think about the next pattern point that we would have. I'd have to go all the way out 27 because the cube root of 27 is three. Cube root of negative 27 would be negative three. So it really is kind of flattening out. Talking about these pattern points, it's gonna be a little bit different, right? So we need to start kind of in that middle. And where is that middle? Well, it's at zero, zero. So I'm gonna say start at zero, zero or start in the middle. From the middle, what happens? Okay, this is a little interesting. We're going over one both directions. However, to the right, I wanna go up and to the left, I wanna go down. So from the middle, remember, we're going to go over one and then right up, left down. Back to the middle, what's our next set? Over eight, and then what? Right up to, left down to. Let's talk domain and range. Well, if we're walking on that x-axis, we always see the graph, no problem, all real numbers. What about the y-axis? Don't be fooled. Remember that it's always increasing and decreasing, but very slowly. So we might need a mega telescope to see it, but it's there. Both of these are all real numbers. Another cool thing about the cube root function is it's symmetric to the origin. We could rotate it 180 degrees and it will look exactly the same. Sometimes you could think of it as a double reflection over the vertical axis and the horizontal axis. This is called an odd function. Anytime you are symmetric to that origin and you can just rotate it 180 and look the same. Let's do a couple of transformations. First of all, we're going to state the transformations verbally. Write them down. Y equals the cube root of X is reflected about the horizontal axis and translated down three units. Well, let's graph this. Remember our pattern points. We're gonna pull from the middle. So I'm gonna go down three units, pulling from the middle. I start at zero, zero, but down three. Next, we wanna use our pattern points, but remember it's reflected about the horizontal axis. Our typical pattern points are over one, right up one, left down one, but wait, it's reflected. So remember these are, yeah. All right, so think that through. Back to the middle, we're gonna go over one, but this time the right is going down and the left is going up. Back to the middle, over eight, the right is going down, the left is going up. Let's plot. Okay, that looks pretty good. Now let's take a look at our last example. Do you see the transformations? We have that vertical stretch by a factor of three and we have a translation to the inside opposite to the right by two units. Well, I'm gonna let you go to kind of do this one on your own, but I wanna quickly talk about that vertical stretch. What happens? The Y values are multiplied by three. So when you're supposed to go up and down by one, you really have to go one times three and go three. And when you're supposed to go up and down by two, two times three is six. So think that through. Write your transformations down, plot your points, sketch it, come back and check your answer. All right, really check that you got that vertical stretch in there. I wrote out my points just so you could double check your work and make sure you understood. 